I mean, like, like, wow, like, like, yeah, crazy, like, crazy, man, just, just crazy. Holy cow. <laughs> the Holy Shaft, a Giza mystery. The Holy Shaft and the Holy Circle. It is really almost hard to believe that this is not more widely known. Uh, and it's, if it's not, it's me to blame because I'm the discoverer of the Holy Circle and the Holy Shaft. And there's other discoveries coming from this. I probably won't be able to get to them in this video today. But let's start out. Where at Giza is the Holy Circle? Now, Giza has an ancient uh, mystique that, of holiness that goes back before the Egyptian pharaohs. So here you can see the Khafre and Khufu pyramids and where that circle is. And it, it's exactly 888 feet the holy circle from the center of the holy shaft which is right there now here's what the holy shaft looks like it's humble it's sitting there unobtrusive in, in the giza desert and it basically is a circle in a square you know the age-old problem of circling the square squaring the circle the quadrature of the circle was an insolvable problem of mathematics until the great pyramid solved the squaring of the circle and then da vinci and robert grant in recent times have and so that symbol a square is the earth circles heaven eternity how did god and man get together it's impossible according to the squaring of the circle problem conundrum but it has been solved and so the other uh, esoteric symbol we've shown the macrocosm and the microcosm the five-sided pentagon the six-sided hexagon that's a symbol too of god and man heaven and earth and so that's what we're getting into with this holy shaft so from the shaft to the southeast corner of Khufu, it's 888 feet. To the Sphinx, 888 feet. To the tomb of the first female ruler in the history of the world, Queen Kenkawis, 888 feet. And to Khafre, straight west, 888 feet. Now, did Heme Yunu, the architect of the Great Pyramid, plan this? There is certainly unified planning going on here at Giza. And I think Heme Yunu was involved, but also the ancient mysteries he had grabbed that were alive before him. Okay, so another interesting thing I noticed because I, I happened to measure the angles of these lines and it's 105 degrees, actually 104.5 between Khufu and Khafre. And isn't it interesting, that's the angle at which the two hydrogen atoms in a water molecule are, which makes the holy shaft be the oxygen. Incredible, but that's an aside. Okay, so from Google Maps, just to show you here, so from, you know, that point, the, the shaft to Khufu, there's the picture from Google Earth, 888 feet. We go out to the Sphinx, there's the picture from Google Earth, 888 feet. We go down to the tomb of Kenkawes, and there's your picture right to the center of her tomb, 888 feet. Then we go straight west to Khafre, so you can see his pyramid towering to the left there, and right to the edge, 888 feet. Incredible. Now in this holy circle is the Eye of Horus. Now this ancient symbol that actually predates Egypt, but it's certainly a big part of the theology of Egypt. You've seen the Eye of Horus, the Eye of Ra. So here we found it on the Giza Plateau in sacred geometry. You can see the artist beginning to draw it. That right there is the holy circle. And you can see the Eye of Horus that's on the Giza Plateau. There are several of them. Okay, some interesting stuff here. So centered on Khafre is this circle. And with the same radius centered in Khufu is this circle. So basically that's the radius that between the tops of the two pyramids. So this is the vesica that's formed. And actually there's an eye of Horus that's formed on the plateau through this. But the central divider line goes through the northeast corner of the tomb of Hemiunu, whose name means human. So before Vitruvius and Da Vinci were doing the human divine thing, you know, here it is from Hemiunu on the Giza Plateau. But that line also goes through the holy shaft. So that's incredible. Now here, the Hemiunu template, which we've found, is sliced through the Great Pyramid. It's the same size as Menkara. So you've got a pupil here, a pupil here. Then the third eye, which would be inside, hidden, this is the size of the dilated pupil. And this is actually proportional to the size of the eye socket. So here is all about eyes on the Giza Plateau from Hemiunu, the human. So uh, these eyes we're finding on Giza. 
Uh, the pyramid's well known to be a 1 43,200 scale model of the Earth. The Hemianu template, which we showed, is 104,700 millimeters. So there's a top view of the pyramid. The red is the Hemianu template. So that's 104,700 millimeters uh, across that, that template. And so the average human eye is 24.23 millimeters uh, transversely, okay? So you divide the number, uh, the number of eyes that could fit inside that template and it's 4,320. That's incredible. 432. You got. It's uh, related to the diameter of the moon. It's related to the diameter of the sun and the speed of light. 432 squared gets you to the speed of light. Wow. So the eye of Horus. Incredible. The human eye is the base unit of the Great Pyramid and the universe in a sense. Okay, so that's connected to this holy shaft. So here's Giza. The eyes have it on Giza. Yes. There I am. And, uh, okay. So, I got to thinking. If that holy shaft center does the exact 888 pointing, it's the, it's the center of that circle, where else does it point? You know, maybe there's more than that circle. So I put together some field notes, and wow! This is just a small part of them. 2,300 feet exactly to Menkara, the middle. 2,000 feet exactly to Hemiunu's tomb, 1,500 feet exactly to the entrance to the trial passages, 2,100 feet to the entrance of the Wall of the Crow, the underpass, 1,600 feet exactly to the Khufu Causeway. And this one, if you've watched my channel, you've seen programs on the Fibonacci origin, exactly 5,280 feet. One mile exactly, and there's more. This is what I just found initially. It is an exact even hundred number of feet from almost everything at Giza. Wow. So I'm just going to stop this program here. You know, well, let, let me add this. Let me add this. So there's the holy circle. Okay, so this is the tree of life and the flower of life laid out over Giza exactly the way the sacred geometry calls for it. So we found this and we know a circle's part of the, you know, sacred geometry. And so there's the flower of life. And so the tree of life, which is this ancient Hebrew Kabbalah configuration, which has to do with the nature of man and God connected, it's just incredible that the center of this construction is the holy shaft. I first made this at somebody's suggestion a long time ago before I knew anything about the holy shaft, just trying to figure out where you'd place this. And when I finally get all this together, Tiferet, which is the Sephiroth for beauty, is the center of the flower of life and the tree of life there. Now there's an ancient way that, that the, this configuration, the, the, the tree of life is used. You start with the crown and you go down to wisdom. That's just, I'm just taking what's, what's been handed down. I didn't invent this form of following these paths. So God from above gives you wisdom. Wisdom is a gift, you know, and so if you have wisdom, it's a gift from above because if you're wise, that's what it means. You're connected to something more than yourself. And once you get wisdom, you begin to develop understanding, bina because you start to realize, oh, that person's mean because his dad beat him. You start realizing that person's feeling guilty because they betrayed their wife. And so with that understanding, you start gaining mercy. But no, the path to mercy led through knowledge. Knowledge, death, is not often shown on the tree of life. It's because you gain the knowledge by, by being merciful. You gain a knowledge of human nature. But then as you're merciful, you realize being too merciful, people take advantage of you, and so you need severity or discipline. And maybe a better way to put it is boundaries. You need boundaries, so you develop boundaries. And then as you do that, you finally develop victory. You're no longer a patsy. And, and on that path from severity, from discipline, from boundaries to victory, you go through beauty. And here's the point, I'll stop with this. Beauty is where that unobtrusive, that, that humble, holy shaft is. You don't become beautiful by putting on makeup or trying to be beautiful. You can't be beautiful by trying to be beautiful. You won't be beautiful. 
beauty comes as a result of following the disciplines, gaining wisdom, let wisdom give you understanding, and then that makes you merciful with the knowledge you gain. And then you need to develop borders and boundaries so you can have a whole and complete life. So I hope beauty is yours, and we're going to talk more in our next video about this incredible The moon is moving slowly and it's circling around, and though I'm thinking that it might take long, I can hear the singing of a blackbird song And he's sitting all alone on a crisscrossing wire He's fading in at the fading out of my dying fire